In this video, I'm going to be analyzing every touch from my Sunday League game in the hope that I get better. My first touch of the game displays something you'll see me struggle with a lot throughout the season. Throw-ins. I receive the ball, but instantly lose possession. Why? In situations such as these, you typically have two options. Get away from the defender by running toward the ball, or stand your ground and try to push yourself up against them. This defender is riding my ass harder than a Honda owner, so I should be using my body to create space between him and the ball. However, that would require me to be physical. And let's be honest, I'm a little physically challenged. I'm also standing way too parallel. If I try to turn, I'm just going to run into a brick wall. So my only real option is to take my touch toward goal. However, if I were standing more on a half turn, like Matias is here, it would allow me to do a couple more things. I still have the ability to take my touch back if need be, or now I can let the ball run slash take a touch down the line and delay losing the ball a little longer. Next touch. I casually display a vertical most NBA players would be jealous of, and then get a touch on the ball similar to the one Ronaldo got against Uruguay in the World Cup. I think a hair fiber might have gotten on the end of that. Not much to analyze here other than just be more athletic. Next play. I receive the ball after one of my forwards gets wiped out, start moving down the line at a snail's pace, and then send a nice diagonal ball to my forward Linden. And pause. Why do I run like this? This is not normal. Is there a way to fix it? Linden then takes on a shot, and that's the play. I think this was decent, my pass was into space, and I moved into a good area. Had Linden played the ball to me here, I would have had a good amount of space to either take on a shot or look to square to someone in the box. However, the opposition did a good job of closing in on him, so the passing lane got small very quickly. Welcome back to a familiar sight, another throw-in. This time, instead of controlling it, I decide to just try and head it out to someone. And by someone, I mean no one. And by no one, I mean the opposition. I do not want my team to have possession, it makes me uncomfortable. Let's look at this frame. First of all, I got two dudes on my ass this time. And second of all, let's see my options prior to the header. I could try and head it to my thrower or my forward here, but they are being tracked by this defender. Another option is my forward here, which I believe was my intention, but intention doesn't matter when your headers consist of closing your eyes and hoping it doesn't hold too bad. I'm a little baby. A much better option would have been to run toward the ball, creating space between me and my defender, and then taking my touch into space and looking for relief from this pressure. Alternatively, a more advanced move would have been to position myself on the half turn, use a body feint to pretend to go for the ball, and just let it run down the line. But looking at myself at this moment in time, this would probably result in a hernia. Next play. I receive the ball from my center back, I take a nice first touch into space, and then I proceed to run like this. This is better off staying on a hard drive hidden in a locked drawer. I then take a hard second touch, trap myself on the line, and pass it back. Let's break it down. I call my second touch horrid because it takes me out of the play. Rather than moving toward the goal and into space, I'm taking myself toward the most pressure. My second touch should take me here. Yes, this defender is closing in on me, but this touch will let me get in a better passing position. It creates space for these two passing lanes. I could pass to my first forward, John, but it would not be ideal as he has a defender right on him. However, we could potentially play a 1-2 with me occupying this area here. The second passing option is Marco. This would be the best option. He's in between two players and in a great position. However, let's be honest, I can't make that pass. So let's just move on. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a trilogy. Another throw in. In this one, I finally decide to position my body better, almost being at a half turn. However, the law of Sunday League kicks in, and the second I do one positive thing, I must balance it out with something almost incomprehensibly bad. The ball comes at me, and instead of going toward it, I stand my ground, and ought to control the ball with the I'm gonna piss my pants pose. This results in an awkward first touch. I again make sure to let the ball bounce. And then I do some real freaky shit that somehow gets to my midfielder. And then it's kind of a lost play. Again, when the ball is in the air, your goal is to always bring it down as quickly as possible. By not running forward here, I'm giving the ball the maximum amount of time in the air, allowing another defender to close in on me. If I ran at the ball and took my touch midair, I'd be going into space, leading the defender out of position, and would allow me to look for the open pass, which in this instance would either be back to the thrower or to my mid here. Put that all together and we could have witnessed something more like this and less like this. Here's an example of decent off the ball movement. I notice my forward reclaims possession after a pass and immediately start moving into space. I call for the cutback, but he does not notice me. I then see that Marco goes for the cross and I see that my other forward Linden is already occupying this space. So I decide to sprint to the back post. Linden ends up tracking the ball and finishes it beautifully. But if he missed it, I would have been positioned perfectly to also miss it. Again, I think this was decent off the ball movement. If I had any critique, it would be that during my initial run, where I wanted Marco to pass the ball to me, I should have ran diagonally toward him to make the pass easier. A majority of the time, an angled run is better than a parallel one. 
Next touch. The keeper throws the ball toward me. I let the ball bounce a little, and then I channel my inner Ronaldinho and destroy this defender. Unfortunately, though, in the process, he also destroyed my future children. While this move almost made it into a cap cut edit, the reason I felt the ancestral pain was ultimately a lack of awareness. When a defender is close behind you and you are facing your own goal, you should take your touch into space, shield the ball, and look for an outlet. Otherwise, it'll be the meeting of an immovable object and an unstoppable force. His knee against my balls. Next touch, a similar situation to my last video. The ball is played slightly behind me from my mid, and this time, instead of contorting my limbs, I run back, control it, and start moving into space. Oh my god, I learned something. However, lightning does not strike in the same place twice. I then proceed to once again force myself down the line where three defenders are waiting with open arms and just kick the ball somewhere. Thank God, I was worried I was actually getting better. Looking at this frame, we can see that this defender's body language is to try and force me down the line. By taking the bait, I run straight into him and his teammate, forcing me to do this. Instead, around this moment, I should have played against his momentum and dribbled toward the middle. My other option here is when I inject this burst of speed, I open up a small passing lane. If I played the ball diagonally here, it would be a perfect through ball for my forward Matias, who would be under no pressure as I've taken his marker with me. Judging by this pass I actually make though, there's no chance I'm making this hypothetical one. Next touch. My right back Ross heads the ball toward the center of the pitch. I start to run toward it. I see this player running at me, so I get scared and just boot the ball up the pitch for my forward to sort it out. Looking at the moment before the ball gets to me, we can see I have multiple options. First. Instead of booting this, I could just pass it to my open midfielder right here. But that's not as fun, so I didn't do that. Another more creative option would be to pretend to take my touch out here with a feint, but instead just let the ball run along into space. This would allow me to get my body in between the defender and the ball, and let me move forward more easily. This is a great option because when we look at the footage prior to me receiving the ball, most of the space is right here. Moving on, the opponents are trying to build up their attack. I then notice two of their mids starting to run into space, so I try to run and put pressure on them. The ball eventually makes it out to me, and I proceed to hit this defender with a five-star skill move. But instead of breaking his ankles, he breaks mine. Again, while this move almost barely looks cool, it really served no purpose. I should have tried to take my touch out into this space. This next moment is how we get our second goal. Just want to note, I'm not involved in this play in any capacity. Our midfielder Kirk plays the ball out to our right wing Drew, who sends in an absolute stunning ball into the box. Linden, our forward, is the first and only person to react, and heads it in to make the score 2-0. Then, on the other side of the pitch, Derek saves a penalty. Again, I'm not involved in this in any way. Alright, alright, back to me. We begin by playing it out from the back. My forward John is dropped deep. He picks it up, turns, and spots me making a run. He sends in an absolute legendary through ball. I take an absolutely abysmal first touch, get the ball lost in my feet, and get bodied by this defender. Awesome. My first note would be for me to not run so inefficiently, and my second would be to just... I don't know, maybe try a different sport. This next play mimics almost exactly how our last opponent scored on us. One of their wingers makes a diagonal run toward the byline, squares the ball into a dangerous area, and it deflects off one of our defenders and into our own net. Life imitates life, I guess. Here's a bit of banter. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I should just cut this out of the video, but I'll just let it play and then promptly move on. Next touch. I intercept a throw-in and head it back to my center mid. All skill, no luck. He heads it out to our other mid, the ball kind of ping-pongs around for a little bit, and then Matias dribbles around his defender and plays a beautiful through ball out to me. I pass the ball first time to our forward Linden, who takes a touch, and then plays it back out to me. I take a good first touch to set myself up and blast the ball just wide of the near post. Honestly, not the worst thing I've ever seen. Just wanted to include this clip to show the absolute beauty of Sunday League. Great, so I think I'm just gonna randomly end the series here. Bye. Here we go back to our throw-in shenanigans. I again do not run to the ball, but I do play a nice little flick back to our forward, but it just doesn't reach him. Final touch of the game. My mid Matias plays it out to Linden. He plays the ball out to me. I wait patiently for the ball to run alongside me, and then I send a ball into the box where the only person waiting to receive it is the goalkeeper. The most obvious thing here is that I did not get my head up. If I did, I would have seen that no one was in the box. I don't really have a lot of options here, so I think the best thing I could have done was to either take my touch right here into this space 
and see if maybe John here makes a run, or maybe I could play out to Matthias and move into space. Although this side is quite congested. Alternatively, I could have let this run by me and then fake a cross to throw off this defender and then move into this space. But again, my only option would have been Matthias. Ultimately, with how congested it was here and my lack of options, I probably should have just played this for a throw-in or a corner by just running it down the line and kicking it purposefully off the defender to allow my team to reposition for a set piece. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Let's get better together.